Hey guys, this is Dio, and thanks for tuning in to my guide on Senren Kagura, Peach Beach Splash. So, in this game, a lot of the trophies that you'll encounter are very easy to get just by going through the main storyline. So I'm not really going to cover those missions, except for to say that you definitely want to go through the main storyline and complete all of these before continuing on to some of the other points of the game. So the reason I would suggest doing this before you get too far into the game with other things is that you'll unlock a lot of different card decks that will be available in the shop, and you'll really build up that card arsenal to really build a solid deck to get you through a lot of the harder missions. Going through all of these single player matches as well and just going through the main storyline will let you get a feel for all of the characters. They all just kind of have different personalities, voices, you just want to choose one that you like the most. They really don't have much of a different playing style from character to character, except for their melee weapon that they use. So pay attention to the melee weapons as well, because if you choose a good one early on in the game and you try and build up these melee kills for that trophy, that'll make grinding later a lot easier. But again, it doesn't really matter who you choose. And in the end, to do some of the V-Road quests, you're going to want to level up 5 characters to level 10, which might seem a little daunting at first, but once you get into this game, you'll notice that you make tons of money, you can farm really easily, you get tons of cards, so don't even really worry about that right away. Okay, so now that the basics are out of the way, I want to show you my deck that I've set up, and I want to explain exactly why this deck works really well for me, which is going to really have more impact on your ability to play this game really well is just understanding the deck loads and what you want to aim for with certain weapons. Okay, so the single most important card you're going to have in any deck when creating one is going to be your weapon. This is going to determine how your dash works, how your jetpack works, and they all have two firing styles. So if you are just starting the game, maybe you want to try out all these weapons and see what one really you think is the best for your playing style, but personally, I think the Gatling Gun is just the best. I tried out every single weapon, and it just does the most damage, and the cards that you have available to you will make it so that you're just a boss, and just pretty much awesome. I've used the same deck load for single player, for online PvP, for the co-op survival, and it just wrecks everything. To make things even better, the secondary fire mode of this weapon just essentially doubles your damage output. It increases the rate of fire, it does consume more water when you're in this mode, but you can freely switch back and forth at any time, and once you reach that soaking wet mode so you have unlimited water, you can just switch to that and just destroy everything with ease. So when you're building your deck after you've chose your weapon, Make sure you're paying attention to how long it's going to take these cards to cycle back on in their cooldown time, which is this little hourglass in the bottom right hand corner of every card. So for this strategy to work really well, you're going to want to use your pet cards and your attack cards pretty quick when they come up on your list and their cooldown is done. And you want to hold on to certain support cards just in case you run into a tough situation. So why I chose the pet cards is really easy to explain. They're all just one timer, so they come up really quick and you can just use them and they'll float around for a while and you need to choose three anyway. So I have the first one, which is this lightning explosion guy, and I chose him just because in survival, he'll hit multiple enemies when he runs in and explodes. So when you have a big group of people and you happen to have that card, he'll run in, he'll hold them off or just destroy them for you really quick. The dolphin just does tons of damage, and it's just having like an extra assault rifle with you, so it's nice. And the other one is just a sniper card, which has the most range out of these pet cards and does a lot of damage. So it's really good to have these three cards, and you can switch them up if you want. The main thing are going to be these skill cards that you want to focus on. So obviously if you're just starting the game, you don't have the high ranked cards, you might not have 4 stars or 5 stars to use, but if you use this style of card uh, with your setup and just upgrade it as you start finding new and better ones, I think you're going to have a really easy time with this game and you're going to be able to complete pretty much any level fairly easily. So before I start explaining what each card does and the reason we want it in our deck, I'm just going to throw up on the screen here where you're going to find each of these cards. So if you're new to the game, if you don't have them unlocked yet, you'll know what decks to buy to try and get these 4 star or 5 star versions of this card. So let's get into it. So with the Gatling Gun setup, these 3 support cards are a must, and I'm going to tell you exactly why. 
So the first one here will increase your splash gauge and try and get you to that soaking wet form where you have unlimited ammo. And when you're in this mode, I would highly recommend switching your Gatling gun to the second firing mode so you do double damage. The form of this card, where you only use it on yourself and not your whole party, is going to be much better for you because it has a lower cooldown, as well as it'll increase your splash gauge way higher than the one for your entire party. So it's going to be really beneficial to have this on. The next card you're really going to want to have in your deck load is this reload speed up. So with the Gatling gun, when you're not in soaking wet mode and you don't have unlimited ammo, you will go through ammo really quickly and it does take quite a while to reload your weapon. So this is going to be really helpful while you're waiting for some of your other cards to pop, just because it'll allow you to reload much, much faster. And again, you're going to want to have this just for yourself because the cooldown on it is much faster and the increase to reload speed is much better than for your whole party. So this last support card that's a must is this damage up card. Now on this one, I did choose to do it for the entire party because everyone can benefit from it no matter what weapon they've chose. And it only has a two timer for the entire party. So this is a really good card to have and it'll really fill in those gaps when you don't have your soak gauge up to max, you don't have unlimited ammo and you don't have your reload speed card on. So this card is really great for filling that gap when you don't have these other support cards and it'll allow you to maintain that good damage output. So you're going to want to put this on pretty much just to wait for other things to pop up to allow you to go into that secondary mode and do tons of damage. While you have this card on, I would highly recommend staying in just your primary shooting style because you'll have less ammo consumption and you'll still be putting out tons of damage. So with your attack cards, I found that just having two on your deck seems to be the best. And again, you want to choose ones that don't really have a long timer to it. Now these ones, if you want to try out other ones, like really feel free, they might be better for certain situations, but personally I just think this Energy Blast one is really great because it does tons of damage, you can move it around while you're using it side to side, and it only has a one timer. So you can use this really quick, and if it comes on your deck uh, loadout, you can just use it really quick and wait for other cards to pop up. As well, the black hole, the one I have on right now, makes me invulnerable as well. So while I'm using it, I can't be hit, and it pulls all the enemies together, which is great for survival and does tons of damage. So the very last card in your deck is kind of like a hot swap card. We want to put whatever is going to be best for that certain game mode in this slot, and I change it depending on what I'm doing. So right now, for co-op survival, I have it set for range and melee damage down. It only has a counter of two, so this will be really good as well when you're just waiting to get that soak gauge back up to have unlimited ammo, or you're waiting for that reload speed or attack up card to pop up on your list again. This will really help in the tower defense, and even if you're just against other computer players or opponents, this can be really good. These cards also take any bonuses that your opponent might have on at the time and replaces it with this debuff. So it has lots of uses. Again, you don't really need to have this particular card on. You can change it for just melee damage, which could be good just for co-op survival. Or you can change it for just range damage, which is going to be much more beneficial when you're just fighting other players or doing the single player missions. So I just want to talk really quick about the co-op survival missions and how to achieve a victory in these pretty easily. Now, there's no trophy or anything associated with this, but it is a really fun part of the game that can be pretty challenging. So you can do this solo or with other actual players. Actual players will be a lot easier, especially if you have good communication. So right away, you're going to want to start off the fight by turning to your teammates and shooting them with water. This will fill up your soak gauge and you want to get to that soaking wet form so you have unlimited ammo. So once your team is in this soaking wet form, you're going to want to start focusing on just defending these towers. Now the first few waves are pretty easy to get by and you can kind of just derp around and do your thing and shoot whatever and you'll probably pass it with minimal effort. But as you start getting to the higher levels, you'll notice that these towers are destroyed very quickly, so the best advice I can give you is just focus on defending one of those towers. Generally, there's one in the middle of the map and two at the side. So after the first couple waves are done and that soaking wet form is wore off, just focus on the tower that has the most health left that's preferably in most levels one of those side towers. 
So once you have those couple people defending the tower, as long as you have decent cards, you should beat it with minimal effort. Now, you can have them spawn really quickly. I would suggest having the damage down ability on, because it'll affect all the monsters and help those towers survive a little longer. Now, just keep in mind that every five waves, the health of the towers resets, so all you need to do is make it to the end of that fifth wave and win to move on. And even if you don't, you really don't take too much of a hit to your reward and you can just continue on. Well that's about it guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, this is just the setup that worked best for me throughout the game that got me through everything pretty easily. So if you have a better setup that you want to share, I'd love to see it and see how it works for you. If you really dig the video, leave a like and subscribe. Again, this is Dio, have a good one guys.